Hello again. In this video, I want to talk about uh, how to create a PetriNet that represents uh, a critical section. Okay. A mutual exclusion, I, I mean. Okay. So imagine that we have just a place. So that's the critical section. What does that mean? So let's just imagine we have two processes. So the process is ready. So we have P1, process 1, and process 2, and the critical section. So the process 1 is ready. So when it's ready, so we put a token. And when P, uh, P2 is ready, we put a token. When we put a token here, a token here that uh, the critical section is buzzing. So one process is uses now this uh, critical section. So these two, <coughs> these two uh, processes want to use this critical section. Okay. So there is many, many methods to uh, to model critical section using uh, PetriNet. So just let's just see one of them. So this one to use. So we ran. Let's name this transition ram p one. Okay. And this. So ran. P two. Okay. So notice that here, so when we ran, so we can we can run this, that's fireable. So we move it here. And then we can also run this, so we put it here. Okay. So but we want to use we don't know we don't uh want to put two tokens here at the same time because here two tokens here mean that two processes uses the critical section in the same time. So what we can do. So here we can do just, we add a place here, initially, so that's ready and that's ready. Initially, when we start the system, so we have, we put a token here, okay? So, and when we ran this, so this uh, transition, we make the input of this transition is this, semaphore, let's, let's name it semaphore. And this also, to run, it needs one token to be here. Okay. Here in this case, so when, for example, when we fire this, when we fire this transition, we remove this and this token, and we put what in here. And in this time, this can't ra cannot run because this transition need one token to be here. Okay. So that's how to use. So how to liberate, how to liberate this critical section if this process, for example, runs and then uh, it wants to liberate the critical section, it finish its job. So we just make a transition here. Okay. And we return back one here also. Let's see what's happened. What can happen here? So we want to uh, run this. So that's fireable because it needs one token here and one here. When we fire, we remove this and this. And we put it here. Okay. And when it finish, so this is fireable. Okay. When we fire, we return back it here and one here. So now this is also can enter. We do the same thing uh, if P2 want to liberate uh, the critical section. So we return back the token here. But here, uh, excuse me. Excuse me. Here there is a problem because, for example, if I if I ram P2, when I fire this, we remove this token from here, and the token from here, and we put token here. 
and when we fire that's fireable so we're we return back this here and also we return one token here and one here okay so because that so we want to <coughs> we want to make two transitions that liberate the critical section okay so let's uh let's add another so this here this here returns back uh here that's mean liberate the process one we add another transition uh we name it liberate p2 excuse me excuse me for that uh so liberate p2 and we just turn back so we raise this we return back a token to p2 and we return back a token here also okay so now so I imagine that we want to run P2. So in this case, so when we run, we can run this. So we remove this and this token and we put it here. That means that P2 is use the critical section. But here also there is a problem. Why there is a problem? Because here we can fire this and we can fire this. Okay. So what we want to do now, we want to when we when we run this, we make only this is fireable, and when we run uh, this, we just make that this is uh, only this is fireable. Okay. So how we do that? So we just add a place here. And we add also, uh, excuse me, place here. So here, let's now uh, see what's happened. So we initialize the system. We have a token in P2 and a token in P3. Okay. So, and the critical section is is a free now so we have token here because token here mean that the critical section is a free okay so let's for example run p1 okay this is fireable now and this is fireable so we, we want to run one of these two transitions let's run this so when we run so we remove this and we remove this also okay and here P1 is used in use the the critical section and also we put a token here when we fire that's the output and that's the output so in this case in this case this is not a fireable okay because this need one token to be here we can only fire this okay because this need one token to be here and one token to be here when we fire it what we do, we remove this token, and we remove this token, and we return back a token here. That means that the critical section is free, and we return back the token here. If this want to run, so it's fireable now, because it needs one token to be here and one here. So when we fire, we remove this two, and we put a token here and one here. Okay? Now the fireable transition is this. This is not fireable because it needs one token to be here. Okay, we can just uh, liberate P2. Okay, when we liberate, we remove this and we remove this, and we return back a token here, which means that the critical section is free, and we return back a token here, which means that P2 is ready to use also okay so that's it that's uh how to use the 
how to model the critical section, the mutual exclusion system in PetriNet. So if you see that, if you have any remark, if you see that there is a thing you want to remark about, or you want, to, you want me to clarify more, so you can put your comments in the comments section below. Uh, see you later.